but it was such a pain and just this hole in my heart and it was a real quiet Christmas. A reunion three years in the making why a mother and her daughter are holding on to an old Christmas promise. An early morning police chase leads to the arrest of a third Lexington murder suspect. And it's the day many of us were waiting for. The Cats faced off against the Cardinals in Louisville. We have highlights from the game. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. The rivalry runs deep. Good evening. I'm Kristen Kennedy. Two top Kentucky teams battling on the court for decades met again this afternoon. Number one ranked Kentucky took on number four ranked U of L. WKYT's Lee K. Howard is here with highlights from the game. Lee K., it was a fight to the finish. It was. It was a battle between two of the top teams in college basketball. Wildcats traveling to Louisville for their first road test of the season. No love lost between these two programs. Louisville's only lead of the game came at the eight minute mark in the first half. Terry Rogier knocks down the 10 footer, 13 to 12 cards, but the Cats would answer quickly. Aaron Harrison finds himself alone on that left side and he gets his first shot to fall. UK back on top. Kentucky led 22 to 18 at the break. In the second half, off the inbounds pass, Willie Colley Stein steals the pass and finishes the play with the dunk on the other end. 24 18 Kentucky, then off the turnover. Towns going to drive the length of the floor, delivers plus the foul, 28 24. All four Kentucky freshmen played big in this game, but no one had a bigger game than little Tyler Euless. On the kick out, he buries the three from the top of the circle. Euless had a team high 14 points. Louisville not going away. Chris Jones from deep, and the lead is cut to eight late in the game. Just over a minute to play. The Cats need a big shot, and who else do they go to but Aaron Harrison? Open on that left elbow, and that would be your dagger. Wildcats win 58 to 50. Here's Rob Bromley at the Yum Center. Well, points were tough to come by. Hard fought physical basketball game. Kentucky led it just about all the way. You all and everyone else has made this like the end all game. And these young kids came in here and performed. They didn't, they weren't rattled. They stayed focused on the court. And the game was physical. That was more physical than the Texas game, and I didn't think that was possible. This size, they were the worst down. We don't have much of a bench right now. Um, getting Shaquan back, that'll help us. But, you know, it, they don't have to worry about foul trouble, and they've got a bench, and they can wear you down with their size. And I think it wore down on defense in the second half. 58 50, Kentucky wins it. Much more coming up shortly in sports from here at the Yum Center. Rob Bromley, WKYT. Thank you, Rob. Tyler Eulis actually got stitches on his eye after the game. We'll hear what his teammates had to say about his performance. That's coming up a little bit later. Kristen? Lee K, as you know, the Wildcats played in enemy territory this afternoon. They were in downtown Louisville at the Yum Center and back here in Lexington. Thousands of fans packed bars and restaurants to watch the big game. WKYT's Victor Puente joined them. He's live outside Country Boy Brewery with a rowdy crowd in there, Victor. There was a brewery full of excited Kentucky fans here tonight. This rivalry brought out a crowd ready to cheer on UK's 13th straight victory. Now, the people at Country Boy Brewing told me they expected a win today. While Louisville did put up a fight, they had plenty of reasons to cheer. That crowd included a pair of Kentucky fans who were visiting from Florida. They said it was nice to be home to watch the Cats win. I love them. I mean, I, if we don't win the title, it's going to be a disappointment, I think. So, I know it's high expectations, but it, it is what it is. Awesome game. We're here for holidays and just decided to stop into our old watering hole. Absolutely love it. Go Cats. Unlike a lot of the Louisville fans we saw on TV, the fans here stuck around to watch the entire game. In fact, some of them are still inside celebrating, even though the game ended about an hour and a half ago. Live in Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. Victor, thank you. UK fans making the trip over to Louisville this morning. Had some wet weather to deal with, and they're driving through even more rain on the ride back. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking rain chances tonight into tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see those rounds of rain increase as we get into the day tomorrow as well, especially across central and eastern Kentucky. It's already been raining to our west for a while now, and you can see that. Kentucky's most powerful live Doppler, that is Defender. Look at those showers. They continue to move their way into southern Kentucky and out toward the Louisville area and now into Frankfurt. And closing in on Lexington as well, but where it has been a little more active 
a little while longer. We go down south. You can see through Somerset, back toward Russell Springs, and also just south of Liberty. And you go down toward Monticello, some pockets of even moderate rainfall coming down for those folks. Now it's starting to inch closer and closer to us, at least here in Lexington. For you folks there in Anderson County and out toward Woodford County, you're already seeing some of the light rain pressing in, and it will continue working its way eastward. Along with that, we'll see temperatures dropping. You can see just the general tone of the air mass coming our way, looking much, much cooler because you look out toward the east and you still see 57 degrees, 54 degrees, a lot more warmth. This will take us down quite a bit, especially through the day tomorrow. We'll start out pretty mild and then temperatures crash all day long. Here's the breakdown. Expect a soggy Sunday out there with temps trending on the cooler side. And as we look ahead to next week, could be a cold start to 2015. We'll take a closer look coming up in just a few minutes. A third man wanted in connection with the Lexington murders in jail tonight. University of Kentucky police arrested Aaron Smith this morning after he tried running during a traffic stop. WKYT's Whitney Wetzel lists for us the lengthy charges Smith now faces in this crime tracker report. A chase that ended right here next to Commonwealth Stadium led to the arrest of a third Lexington murder suspect. University of Kentucky police attempted to stop a vehicle driving on South Limestone without its headlights on just before 4 o'clock this morning. Police say the driver of that vehicle led them on a chase that stopped at Alumni Drive and Nicholasville Road when the suspect got out of the car and ran. Officers caught up with that suspect on Alumni and University Drive. Police say Aaron Jamar Smith was carrying a 45 caliber pistol and multiple controlled substances. Substances, including crack cocaine and synthetic marijuana. Police charge Smith with driving under the influence, possession of controlled substances, promoting contraband, wanton endangerment, failure to illuminate, and carrying a concealed deadly weapon. In addition to those charges, officers say Smith had a murder warrant out for his arrest in connection to the November 16th shooting of 31 year old Walter Durrell Gray. Police found Gray on Warnock Street suffering from. From multiple gunshot wounds. Devin Jones and Tariqa Williams are also charged with murder in connection to Gray's death. Gray was Lexington's 16th homicide victim of 2014. With the recent arrests in his case, the number of unsolved homicides this year is now down to six. In Lexington, Whitney Wetzel, WKYT. So far, there have been 18 murders in Lexington this year. Police say that's the annual average for the city. Scott County fire crews spent the afternoon cleaning up after a home and truck caught fire. Firefighters say a man was working on his pickup truck near a gas line when the truck caught fire. The fire then spread to his home and melted the vinyl siding. Could have been a lot worse. Uh, luckily, someone was home and luckily he got out from underneath the vehicle when he did. The car owner, firefighters say, had some minor burns on his hands but is expected to be okay. State police say an argument between neighbors took a violent turn this morning in Russell County. Troopers say Jason Willis and his neighbor Trevor Robertson were arguing near a home on Highway 92. Robertson, we're told, then went to his home, grabbed a shotgun, and shot Willis. Robertson is charged with murder and is in the Russell County Detention Center. A homeowner in Lexington says he caught a thief in the act this morning. The man says he pulled up to his home on Miller Street and noticed someone had kicked in his door. When he went inside, he says the burglar was standing there holding his TV. You know, I pulled up and I, yeah, I just turned the corner. I'm like, wait a minute, the hell? My door's open. So I just pulled up and jumped out of the car. I'm like, the hell? And I, my door's open. But then I get close and look and see it's been kicked in. The homeowner called police and they arrested the man standing in his room, Terry Seawright. Firefighters in Lexington had a big mess to clean up this morning. They say a woman was pumping gas at a station on Pimlico Drive when the pump stopped working. We're told nearly nine gallons of fuel spilled, some of it running into the storm sewers. Cleanup crews say the store manager helped prevent a lot of the fuel from running into the sewer. The manager of the store came out right away, did a good job. She put some stay dry down before we got there, some oil dry, and caught most of it. Firefighters tell us these types of spills aren't uncommon, and the spill did not contaminate the water. 
Still to come on WKYT, a family comes full circle, returning to the spot where they were supposed to meet three years ago. We'll tell you why a McDonald's is so special to a Moorhead mother and her child. Moorhead mother fulfilled a promise three years after making it. Noelle Hunter spent years trying to get her daughter Muna back after the girl's father kidnapped her and took her to West Africa. The day she left, Muna and her mother were headed out to get ice cream. And today, WKYT's Hillary Thornton met up with the family, finally headed out together. Saturday makes three years since Noelle Hunter received the life altering news. The FBI informed me that Muna's father had flown with her from JFK Airport in New York to Bamako, Mali. Two days before that, I had dropped her off here at this McDonald's for what I thought was going to be a week visitation. Her young daughter, a Kentucky born U.S. citizen, abducted by her father to West Africa, leaving Hunter fighting for nearly three years to see her daughter, including two trips to Mali. You know, we just did everything that we could to raise awareness about the fact that she had been taken, that she had been abducted by her father. I staged a protest at the embassy in, uh, at the Mali embassy in Washington, D.C. I've lost count of how many times I was on Capitol Hill lobbying for her. All while life back home went on without Muna. Yeah, she missed out on so much. Missing birthdays, holidays, and other special events. I was sitting in this big empty house missing her. We had up the tree. We had up all the little things that she had made in preschool. But it was such a pain and just this hole in my heart. And it was a real quiet Christmas. I sprinkled magic dust for the reindeer. But this <laughs> Christmas, Muna was back where her mom says she belongs, home in Moorhead. It was a long time, but it's, you know, in many ways, it's been redeemed, and we've got new memories now. Marking the three-year anniversary with that promised ice cream from the place this journey began. I never doubted for a moment she was coming home. Closing this chapter and looking forward to many more Christmases together. We called it the mission for Muna. You know, I think it's mission complete, and we are so much looking forward to going into a new year and a new season of our lives. In Rowan County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Moon has been back home since July. Hunter says without the strong support from the community, her return wouldn't have been possible.